quarterfinals at the Northern Ireland Open. We already know our first semi-final tomorrow. Young Elliot Slesser, who knocked out Ronnie O'Sullivan. It was a slog today against Lee Yuan. He won the decider at 5-4. We're up to best of nine now. And uh, Mark Williams, the big favourite for this, made short work of Mike Dunning. Really, really, really good today, the Welsh putting machine. And he won 5-1. Let's drop in quickly on what's on the Eurosport player if you want to watch this instead of our main match this evening. It's um, going there. Uh, Frame by frame at the moment, two each it was at the interval. So, uh, Tiang Pang Fei and Liu Ho Shan are deadlocked. And of course, both looked after by Victoria Shi, who looks after most of the Chinese players. So, uh, it's a strange situation, of course, where they came back in for the mid session here in the practice room with Ronnie and Neil now join us and sort of sat together with Victoria, you know. So, battling out there, but very much part of the same team here. Well, listen, it has been a bit of a slog today. Neil, you've been in the commentary yeah. box for most of it. So, Sing hosannas for what we just witnessed. No, I mean, I thought, always thought this was going to be a different game. These two are very attacking players, and uh, we know how well uh, Bing Tao has been playing, how good he is, but uh, Rob Milkin's the kind of guy that pops up, and he's very dangerous, isn't he? He played beautifully tonight. At the moment, he looks like the pockets look like that, and he's queuing so freely, and he, every time he comes to the table, he feels like he's going to clear the table. Yeah. That's a problem for Bing Tao. This is where he's got to try and hold that... He's like a wild horse out there, and you've just mm. got to try and somehow get a foothold in this game. And you were saying just how instinctive a player Milkins yeah. is, but the first frame, Ronnie, was a couple of tails of the unexpected, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the blue here. He couldn't have hit this any better. There's always a chance a red can go in, but it's very unlucky. Um, you know, you fancy Bingtail amongst these balls would, you know, possibly win the frame. He was, he was banging control here, gone for this pink, thinking, like, you know, they can't do no trouble. He's got the pink, uh, the red and the black out. And then, um, you know, Milkins gets a nice little fluke here. Even did self fight? It did. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Yan is behind us, but I, don't, I said in commentary that I thought that the shot he played might come back to haunt him on that pink because he played a clumsy shot of a slightly yeah. inexperienced play, you know. And yeah. it, most of the time you get away with it, but sometimes you, you know, you get your backside kick for making those kind of mistakes. I'm and not watching him sit here. Milkins apologises as well. You know, after he's played the black, I'm sorry, but I don't think he was that sorry. Yeah, it wasn't very sincere, was it? No. <laughs> What I had ringing in my ears there was what you guys were saying before the game. You were saying, look, he, he's an instinctive player who wants to get in a roll, who wants to get in a purple patch. And in frame two, it's exactly what happened, our first century of any quarterfinal today, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's this black here. You know, the idea, that's this shot is keeping the white in the middle of the table. If you hit that thin, your white goes up to the bulk and hit it thick, you're down here by it. So he's playing these shots very well. He's getting into these little gaps where he's cannoning balls out. And uh, that's a sign when someone's curing really well. And, and the problem that Bing Tao has got is that someone like Milkins is under no pressure. Everyone's expecting Bintel to win, yeah. and, and, and Milkins knows. He's thinking, I fancy this. So he's out there playing, with, knowing he's got to play well. It's like yeah. playing a John Higgins, a Mark Williams, or a Selby. They're up for none, and he's just going to be free willing it all the way. And it's up to Bintel to try and sort of, you know, Get, get over that really uh, and maybe this is what we expect at this level that added pressure but players responding to it a 2-0 down there a 17 year old with players like Ronnie saying look if he's going to be a great and he's to win a tournament now this yeah. is a really respectable break taking all that into the account yeah I mean he played some great shots I mean he's very good at that shot he can hit the ball hard and he's got good accuracy he, he actually hit one in the with the rest in this break which was a tremendous queuing he's got a, a real gift hasn't he but I think he's been a little bit put on the back foot tonight yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think he's been taken by, by surprise. You know, he obviously knows Milkins can play, but, you know, he's come out all guns blazing tonight, Milkins. And, uh... I mean, it's, it's difficult to know how much he's seen of Rob Milkins. Like, as you say, he knows he can yeah. play, but having never played him, he might not have really watched him that often. And he's, he's realising that he can manufacture shots of his own. He's one of those players. I have to say, uh, maybe with the exception of you, actually, when you're, when you're loving it, I haven't seen anyone practice as much as... I, well, I was here this morning... 10 o'clock and he was here in straight back on the practice yeah, table yeah, again no, I haven't seen him not take you know shots what? today sometimes I think it's too much I think there's, there like, there's too much snooker sometimes you come away have a cup of tea Break. maybe have a half an hour maybe go to the gym have a run read a book yeah. get some nice food down there but they're on the table all the time I used to do that a lot, but sometimes you leave your best snooker on the practice table yeah. the idea is to try and save it yeah. for the match table you know? but everyone does it differently and Milkins has done that, hasn't he? Out again for the fourth frame. We're getting a high-level boxing match here. Let's yeah. look through some of the key moments. Very good. I mean, obviously, he's been set back by... This ain't an century. easy shot, is it, this, now? In well, the middle. It's not an yeah. easy shot, that, off the, off the cushion. No, not an easy shot. And he, he played the cannon nicely. And here he is opening the balls up. He got lucky here. And, he, yeah. uh, you know, he almost wants to 
make it clear to his opponent he's getting a bit of luck to maybe to, to annoy him. But, but when you're queuing well, you get little bits of luck yeah. like that, don't you? Yeah. He deserves it. Deserves the, game, it. the game opens up for you. Well, he's 3 1 up and mid session intervals. We, of course, we're going to have a look at the proper stuff with the guys that we have here with the inside. We always have a bit of fun on the table. Now, of course, it's the Alex Higgins trophy. Of course, an absolute legend this time. But if I said, give me one moment that rocked snooker that involved a Northern Irish player, we're going to that black ball fight, aren't we? We've seen a few this week. So we thought we'd do a little sort of. Uh, Sort of beginner's guide, I think, the black ball fight. Because the thing is, Ronnie, yeah. we probably have more of them, rubbish players, you know, like who don't play for a living because we don't make more than, like, breaks of uh, 10. So yeah. we get a lot more closer games. So first of all, you're going to give us a little bit of a, a master class into how you should break off in a black ball fight. Oh. Well, I mean, years ago, they used to play the black up and down here, which is, you know, it's not, it's not an easy shot. But nowadays, you just try and clip the black fin and try and leave the white on the side cushion. And that would be the go-to shot, would it, in the modern game? Yeah, I mean, something like that. I okay. mean, you're not putting your opponent in trouble, but the only problem there is you've left them a double. Yeah. And um, a lot of these players now... So you, if you're playing a double, you're going to aim it for here. If you get it, it's a bonus. But if you miss it, you're leaving it safe. OK. You never want to, you know, murder the frame. So you... All right, I've missed a double. But, but yeah. you put it safe. So you're kind of giving yourself opportunities. All right, I mean, I've hit that a little bit too hard. Yeah. It's up to him to pot it, so maybe yeah. you'll go behind it if you don't fancy the pot. Yeah. Try and put a bit of distance between it, going off. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, well, there you go, you see. <laughs> and that was just in the mid-session interval. Out there, of course, everything's at stake. A place in the semi-final of the Northern Ireland Open for both the players. They're aiming for their first ever ranking title, like everyone apart from Mark Williams here. Huge stakes, huge pressure, huge bottle needed. We're back after the break to take this quarter-final to the better end. We'll make what you want of stats. They often don't tell the story, but in this case, there's one that really does, which is that pot success name of the milkman, 96%. Yeah, and he does it in his own way. You know, he's the kind of player who can unsettle you, I think, because he's got that, that, uh, that way about him where he can create shots. He's missed three pots in, with, in the first four frames. Yeah. Good stuff, isn't it? And he does it in his own way. It's quite unbelievable. You've talked about sort of, you know, if Mark Williams plays his game, mm -hmm. you know, he's hard to beat, he's granite. When you look at someone like Robert Milkins, is, is he more unpredictable as what you're going to get every time you play? He's more of an emotional type player. So if he gets on a roll, he's full of confidence and feels like he can't miss... And then he's a dangerous animal, but if you start to put pressure on him and he starts to miss a few balls, he can then go the other way and get down on himself and yeah. start to mm. sabotage his own success. But at the moment, he's on fire, so, you know, you've got to try and get the fire extinguisher out. That's right, that's exactly. <laughs> he's going to have to do it very quick because Robert Milkins does not get, have to get on much of a roll here. He just needs two more frames to make the semi-final of the Northern Ireland Open. And we'll be live all weekend on Eurosport. We'll be here early afternoon tomorrow all the way through until we have our finalists for Sunday. Phil Stoddard and Joe Johnson are your commentators to the end of this.